The first step to a healthy wash and go is leave-in. I typically use the Miel leave-in, but I ran out, so I'm gonna try out the Design Essentials because they quickly became my top products out of nowhere, like, I don't know. Um, what I do know is when I started using the, and I'll show you, the Design Essentials Almond Avocado Honey Curl Foaming Custard, my hair loves it. It stay moisturized, soft. And then I also use the Design Essentials Almond Avocado Curl Enhancing Mousse. So with these two products, I'm able to create my finger coils. And again, I have very little issues with it. So step number one, get, get the top off. Uh, give me a second. Before you're leaving, this is an important step because there's going to be a barrier between yourself i mean <laughs> your hair and your product so please make sure you add enough leave-in for your hair i am not telling you to buy any products okay i'm just telling you products that i'm using and products that i've been using for months so i know these products work for my hair the only new thing is this leave-in from design essentials Ooh. i thought it was going to be thick but it's really not that thick <clears throat> Okay, add some more leave-in. This is a step that you do not want to skip. A leave-in because you are putting gel on your hair, you put in cut, you know, mousse on your hair. Those things can be drying to the hair. So if you want a healthy wash and go, protect the wash and go, protect the actual hair. Like we love a good style, but please make sure you protect the hair. So I'm trying to make sure I get this on every single strand. So I'm very gener generous with um, leave-in. Okay. If you need to do your nails, I don't care, male, female, whatever, please make sure you wear gloves because the last thing you want is a hangnail, a broken nail to be wreaking havoc in your head, okay? I happen to like wearing gloves when I'm doing my hair. Um... I don't need it more so when I do the finger coils, but anything outside of that, I just feel like the product goes where it needs to go. It doesn't like sit on my hands. So I really like that. All right. All right. So I'm gonna speed this up or we're gonna cut into our next step. And I can't wait to show you. So make sure you stick around. The next part, we're gonna spray some water. It doesn't have to be dripping wet. We're gonna apply a product. And we're not applying a ton of product, y'all. And we're gonna apply it to the entire section. I just wanted to note that I am really working the product in. Like, don't be too quick to add product. Make sure you work it in. So in this clip, you'll see that I make smaller sections of the bigger section that I just worked the product in. I always go in with water and then I go in with um, my mousse. And I don't start off with a lot of mousse, you guys. Please don't have to, don't think you have to smother your hair in product. That's why you have that water to make sure you spread the product through. I'm not going in with, with tiny sections because I know I'm going to shake my head really good and that's going to break up um, some of the curls. So this is just me going through this section and we'll get to the front of the head and I'll talk some more. All right, so I just finished the back of my hair. My head, now we're going to start on the front. <clears throat> in the case you missed the steps, I'm going to go over it again. So let me come over here. We are not taking big sections. We're gonna break this hair up. My hair is damp, not soaking wet. That is something that I had to unlearn. You do not need soaking wet hair to do your wash and go. If you do this in the shower, yes, your hair is gonna be a little bit more wet, but if you're doing this outside the shower, it's, it's really not necessary. So I'm gonna take my product apply it to the hair 
and again the product i'm using is the design essentials almond and avocado honey curl foaming custard definitely a mouthful once i have that product in there and i think it's enough i'm going to go in with my brush and i'm going to brush the product through my hair please do not rip through your hair be gentle take your time if you do not have enough time to do your hair don't that's probably better than you ripping through your hair all right so i'm gonna give my hair another spray of water but i think i have enough product then i'm going to section off a little piece and this is where i then apply my mousse and I definitely apply a little bit too much for this little piece of hair. And I'm just smoothing the product in the hair. You just wanna make sure every strand of hair has product. And that's it. Now you can rake through and all it does is kind of break up the hair. Or when you shake, that will break the hair up as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing throughout my head y'all all right you guys so i want to take this opportunity to point out a few key differences from the healthy wash and go that i'm creating versus the one that bgc had taught me how to create number one being <clears throat> i deep conditioned my hair don't get it twisted we deep condition now okay um not only that I do not believe in the no oils, no butters. I think it's perfectly fine to put oils and butters on your hair. You just need to know how to take it off of your hair. So most of the time, it's, most of the time, it's not what you put on your hair. It's how you care for your hair when you have certain products on and then how you remove products, okay? So just remember that, like, if someone tells you, oh, don't use this, unless you have an allergic reaction, you're allergic, find out the why, like, why not? And so their whole claim to glory was, well, oil isn't a moisturizer. It, it's, not, it's not hydrating your hair. Yes, that's true. Well, water hydrates your hair. Hydration comes from water. That's true. <clears throat> but that didn't mean that we no longer shouldn't use oils. Now, now they're making the distinction of, well, we told we didn't say you couldn't use oils. We say don't, don't use um, raw oils. So, okay. I, I don't know too many people who was actually using raw oils, not to say people wasn't, but I was using oil that was formulated for the actual hair. So that was something in my routine. I did not need to stop. Okay. And then if you're wondering how do you get caught up in a method? Simple, easy. I can tell you before I found out about BGC, I had locks and I had locks for, I mean, at least 15 plus years so you know what that means L like natural locked hair that routine is much different from loose natural hair so i really didn't know much about caring for my hair and so that made me susceptible to you know outside advice because i couldn't figure it out and my version of doing my homework was going on youtube because i know you can learn a lot of things on YouTube. On YouTube, I found myself buying tons and tons of products. And they wasn't giving me the results that I saw in the videos. Now, it's a few things that I didn't take into consideration. <clears throat> the people in those videos have very different texture than myself. <clears throat> Sorry. And I don't know the condition of their hair. So... For everybody out there that's just who follow me and be like, oh, you're my hair twin. Even though our curls may seem similar, we neither one of us know the condition of each other's hair. So my hair is typically almost always color treated. I love color. Granted, I'm not using bleach, but I love me some good color. Okay. So that means off the bat, I'm dealing with another factor that you may not be dealing with. And let's say you are color treated. I don't know your routine. Well, you know my routine. But I don't know your routine. I don't know any um, hereditary factors, 
genetic factors. I don't know your diet. I don't know your sleep. I don't know your stress levels. All of these things play a part in your hair and how it performs. I don't even know you drink water. I don't know if you're frequent at McDonald's. Like it's so much that you don't know when you're watching somebody. So to think you're going to get the same results can definitely put you in a space where you're susceptible for somebody loud and wrong to come through and tell you, hey, you're doing it wrong. Do it like this. And I think they hold fame to glory was the fact that they were licensed. And so when you think of somebody who's licensed, you you may have a little bit more trust. Now, some people are going to be like, I didn't trust it from the start. Good for you. Good for you. But some of us is just like, okay, well, this person is licensed. Let me take a step back and let me listen. Okay. Some of the information that they presented didn't sound half bad. And, and not all of it was wrong. Now, granted, where we went wrong or where they went wrong is money. Um, once you become money hungry and you kind of throw your morals out the window, then, you know, that's just what it is. Uh-oh. Not me causing some frizz already. All right. So once that happened, because I'm not coming in with a wealth of knowledge, I didn't know. I ain't had no clue. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, if I've been doing this wrong, let me learn. So I took the approach of, well, okay, let me learn because I'm the type of person where I want to do just about everything for myself. I don't want it to be a situation where I can't do my own hair. I can't do my own makeup. And that's why my channel has so many different like avenues for me laminating my brows to me you know dying my brows time for a good shake we have a good shake all right now this big section <laughs> i just i just want to keep a certain level of independence going on and so i thought by learning from bgc that would make me independent in regards to my hair because you know hair costs a lot of money and i want to know that the person who's doing it is doing it right whenever i do decide to let somebody do it and so that was my reason behind following it it's not because i'm just a method junkie it's because i truly wanted to learn my hair and i and i still believe in that and I still find just like little courses online to learn from, you know, whether it's a styling or just learning more about hair itself. So this experience has definitely woken me up. Okay. But as much as I've been through, I mean, there are some positives. I've met some really great people. I've been able to help a lot of people. Um, and I've learned so much. And I know like we all want to learn, but we want to learn in a way that doesn't hurt us. And sometimes that's, that just doesn't, it just doesn't work out like that. And it didn't work out like that for me in this situation, but I'm not going to let it deter me from loving my hair. Cause I do really love my hair. Um, I like to have fun with my hair and I've been natural way before it was cool. Okay. I was natural when it was not cool. When people were just like, I mean, are you gay? And there's nothing wrong with being gay, but they literally equated me having locks to my sexuality. Okay. That's how closed minded in the time period was when I was natural. And before I had locks, people were just like, you know, whatever. They wasn't checking for my hair. But now being natural is cool being natural is profitable and everybody want to make a profit off of natural curly girlies so you you want to be careful who you trust and where you get the information from because that person could not truly be genuine and they just want you to spend their money spend your money or they're trying to make some money off of you and so that's why i feel like bgc went wrong because if they were truly genuine about helping people in their hair the moment somebody say like hey we're having some issues it would have been like hold on let's assess let's figure out what's going on let's help you on your journey 
it was it was more of a what are you doing wrong this method works these products are the best they're organic these are salon quality uh you don't know what you're doing i mean they just dogging people and i'm just like dang i literally joined the see some curls for like one month and after one month i was like ain't nobody want to be part of this negative proof hell no i mean no uh-uh wasn't for me could clearly see that's not for me i watched a bunch of videos and that was it am i telling you i didn't learn a thing from um bgc no i'm not saying that but what i will say is i learned more negative things harmful things than positive things and i say that because what they was doing was training my curls to do a certain thing. And my hair was paying the price for the aesthetics that they was trying to display and show. And <clears throat> they say that they teaching us to love our hair, but their whole glory or fame to glory is manufactured curls. Okay. So what I'm doing if I was just simply putting a product on my hair and then, you know, whatever curls I get, I get, okay. But if I'm adding product and I'm like more than just kind of working it through, I'm really trying to make some curls. That's, that's really what was happening. Like if, if you notice, everybody have like the same texture now, the same waves, they, they like everybody hair looks the same. Every picture looks the same. When you see somebody who follow BGC, you know it. As soon as you see the picture, you know it. You know why? Because that's the aesthetic. That's the look. That's, that is the look. If you follow a natural hairstylist and every single wash and go, every single curl looks the same, they doing something to make it look like that. And so that's what you have to like be hip to because... Whatever they doing, if it ain't for you, it's going to be some problems. Okay, so this this doesn't really want to curl. So what I'm going to do is do some little soft curls up here. Boom. So this part of my hair is still growing back. The texture is really different from the other parts of my hair. And... You know, I had to even get to grow to love it because I'm just like, this is not me. This isn't how my hair is supposed to look. This isn't what it's supposed to do. So I struggled. I struggled. I was like, what? Who hair is this? But that's all. I ain't going to talk y'all heads off. But I will say, I do miss long form videos on YouTube. Like... I know everything is so quick in one minute, 15 seconds, but I miss the conversation. I miss addressing certain issues and things. So hopefully I can bring some of that back to my channel. I know sometimes I can be a little spotty on posting and it's for good reason. Um, you know, I have some things going on. Nothing like crazy or anything, but you know, just bettering myself. But, alright. So, this doesn't really want to curl. We're going to do some big curls. And I'm doing it towards the end because I'm not trying to create any, like, coils, per se. Like, my finger coils. Okay, let's see this one I'm going to do right. Put this over here. Okay. We can let that one live. And now this little section, my last section. This did not take me all day. Nor will I be sitting under the dryer for an hour. That was another mistake. They had us sitting under that dryer like that dryer was paying us. Okay. Like we were just sitting under the dryer for hours. That is not good for your hair. I never used to sit under the dryer like that. Even when I had locks, I didn't sit under the dryer like that. So I know 
something just wasn't right. And I hate sitting under the dryer. Like, for real, y'all. I hate sitting under the dryer. That is not... I do not like sitting under the dryer. So, towards the ends, I'm going to do a little curl. Put some mousse on all of this. Ooh. I just want to let y'all know. I'm in my Kendrick Lamar era. So. If you get to cutting up. On Rosie. Shelly. Anybody channel. All my friends just get me into fights and trouble. And I respond to you. Just take it. Take it and keep it moving, okay? If you bold enough to post on these people's page acting like a fool, you bold enough to get a comment back. So don't don't play all coy and shy. Well, I didn't mean no disrespect. I do. So stop. I'm telling you. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, you ain't got nothing positive to say, You you if you got a question, if you got to start off with, I don't mean no disrespect, stop. If not, you get what you got. And and, and that's that's going to be on everything. If I catch it, I'm saying something. I don't care if you're not on my page. I don't care if you're not talking to me. I don't care if you feel like I'm doing too much. I don't care if you think I'm me. I don't care. I don't care. All right. Glad we settled that, right? <laughs> Mm, okay. I'm a, this one don't really need a curl at the end. All right. All right. And now I can sit under the dryer. Now I sit under the dryer no more than 30 minutes. The rest, air dry. So I'm very strategic on when I do my hair. I usually do it in the morning or midday because then I have the rest of the day for my hair to continue to dry. And that's just what I do. You do what you want to do. But I cannot have wet scalp all day. I did it with BGC and it was a disaster. Okay. My scalp will itch and it, it's not a it's not pretty. If you feel like your end's not doing what it needs to do, just twirl it, okay? All right. That's it, people. It's a wrap. Let's sit in the dryer, and then I'll come back with the finished results. Mm. All right, y'all. So this is fresh from right underneath the dryer. As you can see, we have some juicy, juicy curls. And let me do a 360. Hold on, let me turn on some more light. All right. Let's just one man on the curls, y'all. Because this is what it's about. So, I can confidently say the way BGC had us doing our washing goes was not very conducive to our curls. My hair is very soft. I have the volume because I was like shaking my head when it was wet. And it looks good. It looks healthy, juicy, full. As you can tell, my hair is not actually like just wavy. Mm, who would have thought? So, this is the end result. I like.